Good morning, collectors, followers and friends. Tom Hughes here, back again with some more thoughts on painting. We are in South Wales, in the Brecon Beacons, and I'm climbing Penafan, which is a big old mountain, uh, the biggest mountain around these parts. And I want to do some painting on the way up, uh, maybe on the way down as well, potentially from the top. But I'm thinking it's more likely that we're going to get some good views from uh, probably the lower slopes. So um, <clears throat> it looks like a really, really nice day. Weather forecast is good. Visibility looks good. Got a lot of clothes with me. I think I've overpacked to be honest, but you never know in the mountains what's gonna happen. So um yeah I've wanted to do this for a while really. It's one of my it's one of my favourite places. It's only about an hour and fifteen minutes from my house. <clears throat> uh, it's very, very pretty. Very pretty. My parents live near here as well. So see you in a bit. Okay, so I think this is the first painting spot. Um, it's rather nice. I'm not going to paint this bit. Uh, I'm going to paint down there. Um, there's a small reservoir um, down there, and it's it's always it's always been on my mind ever since I first came up here. It makes a nice photo, but I think I think that would make a good plan air painting. It'd be nice to get this path in, but uh, I need to be further back to do that. And I think oh, the path sort of turns around the hill after this, so it will be out of sight. Oh, look at it. It's a nice start to that. It's about quarter to eight. I woke up at, um, uh, went to bed at about, went to bed about, 10 half 10 and then Louis decided to wake up at three and stay awake and just stood by the side of my bed pulling my arm um, screaming and whining dragging me out so I've been up since three and I started walking up at um, 7 30 so I'm quite tired it's going to be a long day but it should be a good day
I'm actually not ill for once, despite that big throat clearance. Haven't been ill. Haven't been ill since uh, my last painting trip to uh, Brixham, which I didn't film. But I had a stinking cold during that. Nose was just streaming the whole time. There's a guy walking down behind me, so I'm gonna stop talking. Morning. Yes, yeah, it's lovely. You can't. My favourite spot. Is it? Well, just the the whole mountain, really. Yeah. Have a good day. Don't know if you managed to hear the Welsh accent there. <coughs> American viewers. I was just about to do my best South Wales Valleys impression, but I'm not going to. I'm afraid I don't really have much to say today. The th the thoughts, the thoughts part of the thoughts on painting. I do, I do have something I want to talk about, but um, I might do it a bit later today because I'm just so tired. My brain isn't. I haven't really sort of woken up yet. My brain isn't working. Some days I feel chattier than other days. Amazingly peaceful here. Uh, when I, um, when I arrived at, I pulled in about seven and they're already, you know, I saw what, six, seven people come down uh, the mountain into the car park uh, just in the half an hour, within a, a half an hour of my arrival when I was setting up my gear. So I can't, I can't remember how long it takes to get to the summit, but I assume those people have been up there for sunrise at dawn and had, had already come back, you know, in time to go in for breakfast or whatever. What a wonderful way to start a Wednesday. Just leg it up, pen a fan and then come in for some bacon and eggs. It's just wonderful, that. Part of me really wants to live in the mountains, and like I said, my parents live uh, about 20 minute drive from here. But as beautiful as they are, day to day, it's just too quiet for me. And it's weird because when I was sort of in my teens, 17, 18, when I was sort of, when I was doing a lot of snowboarding and um, completely obsessed with that and mountains, all I ever wanted 
was at some point to be able to move to the uh, the Rockies in the States or the Alps or Alaska and buy my tiny log cabin in the middle of nowhere and just go hiking and snowboarding and make art. Um, that's all I wanted to do. And then after university, uh, I did another snowboard season and then moved to Bristol and the city sort of, <clears throat> it gets under your skin, doesn't it? I don't know if anyone of you have found that. The, <laughs> the, the grime, the air pollution, all that stuff, the noise, the, um, the traffic, you know, you know all that stuff's there. But for some reason, after a while, you sort of, it gets under your skin, literally. And you just, you just seem to sort of ignore it. And then after a while, you start to need it. It's really peculiar. I used to go on and on about, you know, I had a friend who wanted to live in London. I grew up in a, in rural Oxfordshire, very quiet little place, tiny village. And I had a friend that wanted to move to London as soon as possible. And I could never understand why she wanted to do it. She's like, oh, I love, st uh, you know, I love looking out my bedroom window. I want to look out my bedroom window and see that glow of orange street lights. I thought, what a weird thing to want. That sounds absolutely horrible. And all I wanted was pine trees and lakes and mountains. And I love that stuff. I love it. But sort of day to day living, I feel like I need the city. I don't, I don't, I still don't understand it. I think part of it is that within five minutes on foot of leaving my front door, you've got everything everything you could ever need. But, you know, if you live in these places, you just plan ahead, don't you? And you do your... you do your food shopping in bulk. I go to the shops every single day. Every day. Fascinating fact for you there. I go to the shops every day. Bet you... Bet that information has enriched your life but yeah as I said um, also this place Penafan, South Wales the Brecon Beacons is an hour and 15 minutes from my front door all this all this beautiful nothingness is an hour and 15 minutes away which is nothing is it nothing at all Especially when you get up at three or four in the morning and there's no traffic. It's not a problem. So you can have the benefits of the city. All your friends close by. The amenities, things you need. And you've still got this on your doorstep, so to speak. And, you know, you get used to anything, don't you? And I think if I lived here, maybe I would take it for granted and I wouldn't have that sense of adventure of jumping in the car at dawn and racing over the, the big suspension bridge, the Seven Bridge, thinking, oh God, what's going to happen today? Excitement. I'm um, slightly concerned I haven't got enough either memory card or battery or both. So I might just shut it off for a second here. Just 
had a nice chat with one of the locals. Um, the camera wasn't on, unfortunately. It is nice to sort of capture those uh, encounters because, um, you know, the vast majority of people are so so nice and, you know, interested and polite or courteous or whatever. They, they, they just want to... I just want to see what you're up to. And it would be nice for me to sort of have a record of those encounters, you know, as much as to show you what happens when you're out doing this. If you don't do it yourself and you're just curious, that is. If you do do it, I'm sure you know. I was just saying there was a really bad accident on the road yesterday. It sounds like someone might have died. Which is not good. I saw on Google Maps, I was checking the route last night just to see how long it would take and the roads were really, really clogged and I couldn't understand why. I guess it must have been from that from that accident. The guy said it's going to get really busy later, I'm sure it will. It's a very popular spot this, I mean there's, uh, every single day of the year pretty much. Um, every time I come up here the car parks, you know, the car parks f got cars in it. it and the weather can get seriously gnarly up here. It doesn't seem to deter people that much. Morning. Trying to get my thoughts together on the, uh, the thoughts on painting part that I mentioned. Uh, what I actually want to say, I was tempted to just start then, but I haven't got long enough left on this painting to really sort of get stuck in, I don't think, so I didn't want to commit to it quite yet. We'll get there. It's a long day ahead. It's a lovely sort of pink, pink colour to the earth on the path. listening to Led Zeppelin on the way up. Very loud. Give myself a bit of a headache, but it's kind of worth it. <laughs> I was having that old um, sort of conversation in my head of, I wonder what 
music that I grew up listening to is going to be listened to by Louis, if any of it. <clears throat> Which bands will have that staying power? Like, I remember my dad being very surprised and sort of amused by the fact that when I was a teenager, I was listening to Led Zeppelin and Jimi Hendrix and Gong and bands like that. And because, you know, he'd, he'd been through it all once himself and I can sort of really see his point now, the, the notion of Louis like listening to stuff that I listened to when I was a teenager is really strange. Pearl Jam and Metallica, things like that. I put Metallica on the other day. Just put Master of Puppets on. Absolutely full blast and Louis sort of, sort of started dancing a little bit, I think. He might have just been freaking out, wishing I would turn it off. Mistaken that for dancing, but I, I no, I think he was enjoying it. But that raises the question, do you know if something's a classic when it first comes out? Like, can you tell instant classic? You know, that term is bandied around, but you gotta wait and see, really. I'm not a big muso person <clears throat> so I'm not going to go off on you know big rants about about bands and stuff because my knowledge isn't that isn't that great and if I did someone would blatantly pick me up on it <laughs> grew up playing the guitar a lot acoustic and electric and I was in a couple of bands one called Goblin Conspiracy, <laughs> which is huge amounts of fun, very fond memories of playing in my friend Eddie's spare room in his parents' house every single weekend, you know, until about one in the morning. The most patient parents I think I've ever met. There's no way I'd have been allowed to do that. I don't think I'd want Louis doing that. I'd do my head in. Full drum kit, just going nuts. Every weekend, when you're trying to sit downstairs, parents sat downstairs trying to watch Inspector Morse or something, and your son and his mates are up there just going absolutely ape. Oh, it's brilliant. I <laughs> really enjoyed being a teenager. Thoroughly enjoyed it. That was great. There's sheep everywhere, isn't there? I want to try. You get that lovely effect with sheep where you get, you know, one side's cool and one side's warm. It's a nice effect to try and to try and capture. It really is dark that bit of the path. Black dark. Not always easy to show these sort of blades of grass. Light's changing quite quickly now.
Morning. How are you? Very good, thanks. You? To all you uh, American viewers, um, I hope it's I hope it's been interesting for you to sort of see parts of the UK from my videos that you may not have known existed. Uh, I mean, I I love the states and I love the national parks of America and. Have fond memories of exploring, exploring them, um, but I know that uh, many Americans haven't been to England or the UK, and maybe don't know that places like this exist. Uh, so I'm more than happy to help show you show you around, as it were. <laughs> Morning. Morning. Do you mind if I have a look? No, not at all. Wow. That is brilliant. Oh, thank you. Oh. oh, fantastic. Thanks. You've done this before, haven't you? I have, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cheers, see you in a bit. Yeah, see, nice guy. Um, I have to say that it's it's uh, it's normally the cities that you meet the um, the weirdos. If you do meet any weirdos, they're normally in urban areas. I'm not quite sure why that is. I'm gonna meet all these people again on the way back down. That's the one of the that's one of the nicest things I think about climbing a mountain. Anyone you see on the way up, you can be sure you'll see them again on the way back. Your little uh, you strike up these lot mini relationships, don't you, for uh, just an afternoon, and you'll never see the person again. Probably not. But you have these nice little interactions. Which is always nice. That's too dark. So let's try. Let's try putting a little sheep in. See what happens. Too bright. Right, it's okay. Just do that. Tricky little buggers to paint. I've already gone too blue on that. Shadow side. And that was my attempt at giving it a head. Yeah, that'll do. Okay. Um, I hope you can see that. Without too much glare. Number one finished. I'm reasonably happy with that. I just thought I'd uh, do a little panning shot just to show you what's what at this point. That's tempting, a wide one of that hill in shadow. I think we need to go higher. So 
So we're going there. Not a bad view. There's a bloody drinks bottle down there, I'm gonna have to get that. So I'm, I'm imagining that if you took a trip off there, it's sort of quite a high chance of dying. I think this is a substantially higher than the, the coast, the cliffs on the coast that I paint next to. And uh, you don't fall into water here. So that's Penafan. Um, I'm really sorry, I can't remember the name of the one I'm still on now. It's terrible, isn't it? But uh, yeah, that one's Penafan. Now we've got the issue now, which I knew would be the case, that once you're up this high and you're this far away from everything, um, tonally things get a bit flat because there's no foreground. It's all distance or far mid-ground. So the paintings are gonna look very sort of one on one plane unless I can get a foreground in, maybe the rock pile. But for now, I think I'm just gonna sit here and enjoy the view for, a, for half an hour. I've got all day, so might... Look at this, look at that, right? How can you come up here, see that, and then drop that? It really annoys me sort of a level of arrogance so there's the uh, reservoir I painted earlier on the path I mean I, th I think I'm just going to do that again maybe 12 by 10 yeah So uh, yeah, very, very pale painting this. So I guess I should talk about the thoughts for this uh, episode. Um, you're going to have to bear with me because I'm—it's—I haven't sort of 
rehearsed in my head exactly what I want to say so it's going to be a bit of freestyle uh, and it might meander quite a lot and make little if any sense but let's give it a go so I was thinking the other day well I've thought about this a lot but it came up again in my thoughts the other day about uh, emotional responses to various art forms um, <clears throat> and the meaning that art for certain art forms have in people's lives um, and then how important that makes them how important it makes them in culture uh, specifically how, is, how important is painting to the average person compared to say music film uh, or theatre ballet things like that um, I saw I, I sort of envy envy actors in a lot of ways because although they're in an incredibly difficult um, they've chosen a very very difficult career path very uncertain uh, it's hard to practice your uh, your art your craft if you're um, reliant on interacting with other people to do it you can't like painting you can just you can just come out and do a painting you can't just go out and act you know you need a you need a script a group of people to uh, do it with um, but who would who would argue that they the things the art forms that move them you know most are paintings over films or pieces of music I think generally in the vast um, amount of circumstances the majority of people would say music and films move them more than artwork does and films and music occupy their thoughts uh, they stay with them more um, I mean you've got like the nation's favourites paintings and Turner's stuff in the National Gallery and I know you know people are very keen on those but compared to your favourite song I mean does it does it have the same impact I wish it did I wish it did there's that Ah, oh, some people coming up, I'm gonna have to get back to this, but there's that thing about playing live, that sort of instant feedback from a crowd that musicians get, which is so, so amazing. And it's different every time because they're playing it differently every time. And there's that performance element that plein air painting, although it is there if you're watching someone do it, um, when the painting's on your wall, it's a very sort of passive experience. And I kind of wish I spent was sort of spending my life creating things that moved people as much as music or film. I guess that's what I'm trying to say.
right there. Thank you. So there we go, finished I think. Um, it's good fun that, really good fun. Got the uh, path with all the walkers coming up, trying to get some sunspots. Clouds are always moving though, so it's... Uh, just gotta make a nice, try and make a nice arrangement. Yep, okay, let's go and do number three. climb down and try and stand on that. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. But people clearly do. You can see from the footprints. Forget it. So, this bit here is called the gap. I think. Oh no, that bit over there, the other side of this peak. So you can ride, there's a mountain, there's like a trail I've ridden on my mountain bike up there. And then you go through the next one over and down the valley. Yeah, so I feel I really should uh, continue the thoughts on painting. 
Um, do you get more moved? Do you get more emotional involvement from paintings than from specific songs or films? If you do, let me know in the comments. Let me know which painting and why. Um, yeah, I can't interrupt it because uh, people turned up. But yeah, it's always been a sort of constant frustration of mine that the thing I put all my energy into creatively um, can never really match how never match the sort of emotional power of a really good song or a really moving film uh, yeah oh, <laughs> I wish I could elaborate this on this more because when I was thinking about it like a couple of weeks ago I had loads of um, things in my head what I wanted to say about it I, I don't know three hours sleep and the view I think has sort of put me off a bit We should talk about the view, really, shouldn't we? I think it, it does something to people to, to see the planet from this sort of distance. It does give you a sense of perspective, doesn't it? Uh, literally and uh, metaphorically. Problems and stresses and anxieties don't seem as important when you're up here. I think that's the allure of them. And what an example of aerial perspective this is. So the sun's there, up there. So we're into the light, really. And it's just that beautiful recession of blues. I want to paint this, but I'm too close to it. Well, am I? No, not really. Almost, just too close. I'm going to give it a go anyway, because I can't get any further back. Um, it's probably a 12 by 10, isn't it? It might be a nice 16 by 8, actually. So, yeah, I mean, looking that way, there's no painting there at all. I mean, it's a nice, it's a nice view, but you really do have to have these planes to make sense of anything. I mean, that could potentially be interesting, having the outcrop, painting that with the people on it, and then this blue background, but I think that's, uh, I don't think it would read very well as a painting. You probably can't even see that on the GoPro very well. Yeah, that rock down there, that rock on the edge, that's sort of terrified me, just thinking about it. I really hope no one stands on it while I'm here, because I'll, get very upset <laughs> there's no paragliders up here I don't think I've ever seen one up here seems like the per perfect place to me but it's getting busy you know people that haven't been up here think Penafan is this sort of Snowden-esque mountain it really really isn't it's a walk in the park. You just stroll up here. It's very, very easy. So anyone that um, is considering coming up and hasn't come up, you definitely should. Definitely should. It's it's pimps. You just it's a it's a walk in the park. And the view far far outweighs the effort. Uh, and there's loads of different routes to come up. I came up the short and steep because I'm hardcore. Uh, but there's about four different ways up, I think. Uh, so I didn't uh, paint those mountains in the end. Uh, I just had a sleep. Because <laughs> I'm knackered. I feel much better now. Uh, it's about ten to one. I think I'm going to start walking back. Maybe paint the first one that I did this morning again, but twelve by ten and then drive to another spot that I know uh, and I think that's going to be really good today so I think I'm going to give that a whirl now it is tempting to paint that over there but I think I'm going to walk 
walk down here a bit and check out the view. Decided to go back down. Uh, gonna have a look at the reservoir from uh, pretty much the same spot as the way up. Um, but I'm getting more and more tempted now to go to this other spot that I have in mind. Um, and I didn't bring enough food and I've eaten it all. It's only one o'clock. <laughs> Right, so it's midday. Uh, I generally don't like painting at midday. The sun's overhead. Uh, it's not really dramatic lighting, but it does look quite nice. That first view uh, of the day I've come down again. So I think I'm gonna have a crack at it. It's gonna be tricky. Might not work, but it might. So let's have a bash. Okay, so I didn't I didn't film this one because you know you can't really see properly in the light, but uh, can you sort of get the picture? <laughs> if I take it off, well, if I don't drop it. Now this is when you move something into the sun. This is normally when you realise it looks awful. And I really don't want to drop the painting. Oh. Let's put it down. Oh no, that looks alright. Yeah. So that's that's two from this spot then today. Um this 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 is very troubling. The uh the 12 by 10 I did at the top, because this light was so bright, look how dark it is. I'm gutted. I'm not. I'm not sure if that's savable. Mm, might be a dud, but I think that's come out. That's come out okay. Right, gonna get a coffee, some food, and uh, find somewhere else. So back in the car. Um, I'm really pleased with that last painting. Actually, I think it's the best one of the day. The 12 by 10 I did at the top. Um, to me, looks way too dark now, which is really gutting. And that happens a lot when you paint in bright sun. I didn't compensate for it. So yeah, we're back in the car. I've got, <laughs> I eat so badly when I'm on these trips. Look at this dirty burger, bacon double cheeseburger from the um, burger van down there. So I'm gonna stuff this and then go down into the valleys more. So I couldn't even eat half of that burger. That was, that was the worst, the worst burger I've ever had in my life. It was disgusting. Uh, yeah. Oh, I actually feel quite sick. I want some chocolate now. Anyway, um, I've just driven away from the car park for Penafan, literally five minutes away, and I found this um, stunning view which I can already tell from the screen on the GoPro, you can barely make out, but trust me, it looks amazing. Uh, so I was gonna go to the valleys. I think I'm gonna stay here. Might be able to squeeze one in if I get this done in time. So uh, here we go.
there's an old couple uh, parked behind me watching me paint right behind me from that car but I can hear him commenting <laughs> not quite sure what he's saying there funny I don't know if you can see, look at this, just beer cans and drinks cans, it's disgusting, why do people do it? Uh.
I put a big Coke can in there. Dirty great drinks can. Well, it's pretty much done, I think. Okay, we'll leave it there. Right, try and get to the next spot. See the light's getting really nice now, warming up. That was harsh. Finito. Just came up a switchback road and got this quite nice view on the edge of the beacons. I thought this was pretty cool. Uh, 
Looks like an old coal mine or something like that. So we're right in the valleys now. Uh, just come off another switchback road. I'm looking for a spot um, I found a couple of months ago, but it was foggy. And I was convinced that if I came back, there'll be a good view. I think I'm about five minutes away, so get back in the car, try and find it. A bit higher up now. I do love me a good switchback. They're so cool, aren't they? Look at that. And there's loads of fly tipping going on off this off this cliff. Dirty bastards. So back in the studio now. Um, couldn't find anything. Uh, no spot to paint in, in the valleys that um, that I really liked. So <clears throat> I drove around for hours and hours. Uh, ended up coming back to Bristol. Went to three different spots in Bristol. Still nothing quite looked right. So I uh, just came home. Um, so it's two days later. Uh, here's the work. I don't know if you can see it all that well. There's a bit of glare. Uh, and they really do need varnishing. They're looking a bit dull. Um, decided to lighten the sky a bit here and here. Uh, sometimes you have to make very tiny tweaks, but uh, apart from that, they're untouched. Yeah, great trip. I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.